My best friend is the man who in wishing me well wishes it for my sake. All paid jobs absorb and degrade the mind. I have gained this from philosophy, that I do without being commanded what others do only from fear of the law. No excellent soul is exempt from a mixture of madness. All men by nature desire knowledge. The greatest virtues are those which are most useful to other persons. The duty of rhetoric is to deal with such matters as we deliberate upon without arts or systems to guide us, in the hearing of persons who cannot take in at a glance a complicated argument or follow a long chain of reasoning. Therefore, the good of man must be the end of the science of politics. He who is to be a good ruler must have first been ruled. There was never a genius without a tincture of madness. The wise man does not expose himself needlessly to danger, since there are few things for which he cares sufficiently, but he is willing, in great crises, to give even his life, knowing that under certain conditions it is not worthwhile to live. A great city is not to be confounded with a populous one. Nature does nothing in vain. Those who excel in virtue have the best right of all to rebel, but then they are of all men the least inclined to do so. The least initial deviation from the truth is multiplied later a thousandfold. What the statesman is most anxious to produce is a certain moral character in his fellow citizens, namely a disposition to virtue and the performance of virtuous actions. All virtue is summed up in dealing justly. He who can be, and therefore is, another's, and he who participates in reason enough to apprehend, but not to have, is a slave by nature. Even when laws have been written down, they ought not always to remain unaltered. Some animals are cunning and evil disposed, as the fox, others, as the dog, are fierce, friendly, and fawning. Some are gentle and easily tamed, as the elephant, some are susceptible of shame, and watchful, as the goose. Some are jealous and fond of ornament, as the peacock. If liberty and equality, as is thought by some, are chiefly to be found in democracy, they will be best attained when all persons alike share in government to the utmost. We become just by performing just action, temperate by performing temperate actions, brave by performing brave action. Persuasion is achieved by the speaker's personal character when the speech is so spoken as to make us think him credible. We believe good men more fully and more readily than others, this is true generally whatever the question is, and absolutely true where exact certainty is impossible and opinions are divided. A tyrant must put on the appearance of uncommon devotion to religion. Subjects are less apprehensive of illegal treatment from a ruler whom they consider God-fearing and pious. On the other hand, they do less easily move against him, believing that he has the gods on his side. Rhetoric may be defined as the faculty of observing in any given case the available means of persuasion. This is not a function of any other art. In a democracy the poor will have more power than the rich because there are more of them, and the will of the majority is supreme. The most perfect political community is one in which the middle class is in control, and outnumbers both of the other classes. Democracy arises out of the notion that those who are equal in any respect are equal in all respects, because men are equally free, they claim to be absolutely equal. Perfect friendship is the friendship of men who are good, and alike in excellence, for these wish well alike to each other qua good, and they are good in themselves. Bad men are full of repentance. Law is mind without reason. The young are permanently in a state resembling intoxication. Courage is a mean with regard to fear and confidence. For one swallow does not make a summer nor does one day, and so too one day, or a short time, does not make a man blessed and happy. 
Politicians also have no leisure, because they are always aiming at something beyond political life itself, power and glory, or happiness. Excellence, then, is a state concerned with choice, lying in a mean, relative to us, this being determined by reason and in the way in which the man of practical wisdom would determine it. No one loves the man whom he fears. In making a speech one must study three points, first, the means of producing persuasion, second, the language, third the proper arrangement of the various parts of the speech. Persuasion is clearly a sort of demonstration, since we are most fully persuaded when we consider a thing to have been demonstrated. Men create gods after their own image, not only with regard to their form but with regard to their mode of life. Some animals utter a loud cry. Some are silent, and others have a voice, which in some cases may be expressed by a word, in others, it cannot. There are also noisy animals and silent animals, musical and unmusical kinds, but they are mostly noisy about the breeding season. The gods too are fond of a joke. Every art and every inquiry, and similarly every action and choice, is thought to aim at some good, and for this reason the good has rightly been declared to be that at which all things aim. Plato is dear to me, but dearer still is truth. Wit is educated insolence. If one way be better than another, that you may be sure is nature's way. In poverty and other misfortunes of life, true friends are a sure refuge. The young they keep out of mischief, to the old they are a comfort and aid in their weakness, and those in the prime of life they incite to noble deeds. Friendship is essentially a partnership. Both oligarch and tyrant mistrust the people, and therefore deprive them of their arms. The beginning of reform is not so much to equalize property as to train the noble sort of natures not to desire more, and to prevent the lower from getting more. We must no more ask whether the soul and body are one than ask whether the wax and the figure impressed on it are one. Hence poetry is something more philosophic and of graver import than history, since its statements are rather of the nature of universals, whereas those of history are singulars. Piety requires us to honor truth above our friends. The state comes into existence for the sake of life and continues to exist for the sake of good life. Without friends no one would choose to live, though he had all other goods. Man is by nature a political animal. It is unbecoming for young men to utter maxims. Of all the varieties of virtues, liberalism is the most beloved. Temperance is a mean with regard to pleasures. No one would choose a friendless existence on condition of having all the other things in the world.